welcome to everybody. Welcome to the uh, the finalists. Welcome to the judges. Um, and and you know, thank thanks everybody for uh, for getting involved. First time that uh, the Master Chefs of Great Britain have done a, a competition like this. Um, it's been a learning curve for us, no doubt. It's been a learning curve for all of you, um, competitors and finalists. Parts of it have been kind of fun. Parts of it taking you outside of your comfort zone. Um, I'd imagine some of you found the filming really enjoyable. Some of you found the, the filming a bit more challenging, um, just in the same way that us as judges downloading them all and um, trying to watch it all and all the rest of it with technology found it interesting, fun and challenging in equal measure. Um, so I think um, really the first thing to do is congratulate you all for being involved for getting out of your comfort zone and actually entering the competition. Um, you know, the competition isn't anything without the people that, that, that join it and um, you know, put themselves out there. Cause it is, you know, I've, I've done a lot of competitions in my younger days and it's, and it's nerve wracking and you, you know, you never really know what to expect and, it, and you put your heart and your soul into it on the plate. And I think you've all done yourselves, uh, done yourselves proud. So well done to everybody. I think, getting this far as uh, you're all winners. Um, and, you know, as, as so often with competitions, there can only be, you know, one ultimate winner, but um, you've all done exceptionally well. So you know, well done to you all for that. Um, before I sort of go any further, I also want to, to, to thank um, our partners in this competition, um, Churchill in particular for their great support with the China and for, for instantly helping and getting involved. <clears throat> and also to Jack and the Marine Conservation Society for partnering up on what is you know, really one of the key things for us as a, as, a, as a human race, not just our industry, but you know, doing more and understanding more about conservation, the environment, and, and what we can do to sustain it is so vitally important. Um, and um, I think the more that we can do to promote that and, and the more we all understand about a very complex issue in all fairness, then the better. Um, so again, thanks to Jack and um, thanks to Churchill. So on to the judging, which actually was really, really difficult. I think of all the competitions I've judged, um, this was definitely one of the hardest particularly because the standard was so good, but also obviously because we couldn't taste anything. So, you know, there was that, that ultimately food is about taste and we couldn't do it. So there was lots of different criteria that we had to, had to build into our judging that maybe wouldn't be there in, in normal circumstances. Um, and I just wanted to give all of the judges a little bit of an opportunity just briefly um, to talk about their experience of the competition and, and, obviously the standard and what have you. So I'll go around them in turn and give them a, a, a very brief, <laughs> emphasis on brief there, gentlemen, um, opportunity to say a few words. So starting with you, uh, Ben, barbecue Thank King. you. Well, well done everyone, <laughs> very impressed. Overall, I've been judging Young Seafood Chef of the Year for a number of years with Seafish. So I get to see lots of fish dishes. And what I was impressed with all of you was you took the fish and you made it the most important thing on the plate. You know, it was the king or queen of the plate. Um, I was impressed with your detail, with all your answers. Um, remember little things, wearing hats, wearing watches, those things are important when you're cooking in a competition. But overall, well done, everyone. All of you, we were so impressed, will get a copy of this book, the one and only Fish Seafood Cookbook and the Seafish Recipe Book. Then the top um, winners in third place, second and first, you'll get a branded Master Chef's apron, a copy of Galton Blackstone's Hook, Line and Sinker book. He's one of our members, a Mitch, two Michelin star restaurant maestro. And the winner will get a fantastic hamper as well. And a check for 250 pounds cash and a check from Ch Churchill for 250 pounds. So some fantastic prizes. So good luck all of you and well done. Okay, 
Thanks very much, Ben. Douglas, do you want to say a few words? This is uh, Douglas Jordan, who is uh, one of the a member of the executive committee of the uh, Master Chefs. Yes, I'd just like to say to all of the competitors, it was very, very impressive. Some very nice, clean dishes, very well composed. Uh, some nice new ideas. Uh, so well done, all of you. It wasn't easy for us as judges. <laughs> you did make it very difficult for us. But I'd like to thank you all for competing, getting involved, and hope we see you again soon in other competitions around the region. Um, all the very best to you all, and thank you so much. Should Thanks, be talking Douglas. up next to Douglas. Get yes, you should be talking up next to Douglas. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't going to, but on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> More to follow, right, Douglas? More to follow. I've got all the names here anyway, so I'll, I'll get in touch. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Jack, do you want to just say a few words from? Obviously, your first experience of doing something like this. So. Yeah, yeah, my first experience judging a food competition. Um, certainly, my first experience judging it through videos, and my stomach was really rumbling by the time I finished watching them all. There were some great dishes. I thought the standard was really high. Some really innovative stuff. Um, some really great elements. Um, a few of them really stood out for me. It was real knockout dishes, but I think you've all done a great job. I think you all you all um, answered uh, quite passionately about sustainability, and it was it was really great to see. So, yeah, I'm just really chuffed to be involved. I think you've all done excellent work. Um, so well done to everyone. Thanks, Jack. Uh, and finally, the, the the legend that is Craig Miller up there in Scotland in holiday mode. Legend. Thanks another, so much. An, another another one of our uh, <laughs> our executive committee. Uh, yeah, just to say, I mean, I've, I've judged quite a few competitions in my career so far, and this has got to be one of the one of the closest ones. I mean, there was literally just a couple of points between, um, you know, first place and the last place. I wouldn't actually say last place, but but all the runners up, um, and because the fact that we couldn't taste it, it brought into highlight things that we might not normally look at, in like like obviously presentation plays quite an important part but even more so this time with the fact that we couldn't actually taste it. But uh, if you haven't finished in, you know, in the, in the top three, then please don't be put off because honestly, there was, there was just a few points in the whole thing and don't let that put you off entering competitions again. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. I, I agree with that entirely. That's, uh, you know, we had a long debate, the judges, a long debate um, when we were running through our scoring. So it was, uh, it was it was tough, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So I'm going to hand over to George McIver, our chairman, in just a second, who will announce um, the results. Um, obviously, in terms of the prizes, normally we would all be in the same room. We'd be able to present them to you, et cetera, et cetera. But we, we're going to have to arrange to either send them or, um, or deliver in, in certain cases. So... Once, once we've all finished, if you wouldn't mind dropping us an email with your contact details, so just an address and phone number so that we can then contact you personally afterwards and arrange for you know, whatever you're going to be receiving to, uh, to be sent out to you. Um, but uh, anyway, so over to, uh, over to our chairman, George McIver, who will uh, announce the results. Yes, well, good morning once again. Um, Graham, Ben, all my... Judges, thank you so much for your time and effort um, in judging a competition which is um, the first time in the, the history of the MasterChefs of Great Britain. So the first time we have, a, you, you're all part of history. Um, uh, as you, I don't know how we're gonna do this in our, our autumn magazine and how we're gonna um, do the, the jazzy bit in there about us all, but this is, this is something um, that's never happened in my lifetime of judging hundreds of competitions at home and abroad. Um, the first time we have ever judged a competition, I've never physically tasted the food. All I could do was salivate. Um, but um, yes, uh, really, really thrilled with the entry to this sustainable seafood competition. Um, and without further ado, um, I'm gonna announce this in reverse order. Um, and as, my good friend and colleague Craig said, we could, we could only split you by, some of you by a point, half a point. Um, and to that, we have an equal third place, 
equal third place, who will both receive exactly the same prize. So third place, we have Angus Duncan and Lewis Masson. Well done, guys. Thank you. Really well done. well done. Well done. So very well done indeed. In second place, we have Keaton Cooper. Well done, Keaton. Well lovely done. dish. Really, really lovely dish. And in first place, the 2021 champion of the Sustainable Seafood Competition, we have James Greenwood Penny. Thank you. Well done, Thank James. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Twenty-one sustainable seafood champion. So very well done indeed to you all, and I'm um, just so thrilled to see so many young people put their heart and soul and do what you did in such a such strange, strange year. So huge congratulations to everyone. Graham, I'll yeah, hand back to you, perhaps just to round up there. Um, but thank you all so much for entering this competition and taking part. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Th th thank you George. And again, you know, thanks to all of you. Congratulations to, uh, well, to actually to everybody, but uh, obviously to James, to Keaton, Lewis and Angus for being at, at you know, the top of the tree. But everybody did such a good job. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you how, how close the you know, top four or five of you were and how, how much debate had to go into it. But um, as Craig said earlier, you know, if, you, if you've not come in the top, top few, don't be put off because you were very close and just getting this far was, was a real, real compliment to you. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, all I, I think... have to say, Graham, if I can just uh, interject there, um, perhaps into next week, um, when you've all had time to reflect, if any of, any of you would like a one-to-one a, a -one conversation with Ben, because we have all the judges' notes, if you'd like some feedback on your dishes, which for me is, and Douglas will agree, it's such a vital thing of competition that you get feedback and it's like, where did I fall down? What could I do to improve? Um, so anybody that would like to take a one-to-one -one conversation with Ben next week, Ben, if you're okay with that, um, then we'll give you feedback from the judges, okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just just let us know when you when you drop us your um, personal details. If you want a call, we can set that up next week. I'd be be happy to talk to all of you, because um, it was like I say, it was a really good competition. You all did fantastically well. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Very thank you very much, everybody. And um, we'll obviously be in touch and um, speak to you all <laughs> soon. And uh, in the meantime, have a good Friday and a happy weekend. Yeah, uh, just yeah. a quick one. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just ask James what is this for? Thank you. Pardon? Can I just ask James what his dish was? I'm because I'm not quite sure, you know, um looking at the pictures on the like Instagram of thing, like whose dish was whose or yeah. James, over to you, young man. Yeah. Describe um, well, I... and the tortellini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just sorry. No, it's all right, carry on. Oh. Um, so it was a um steamed um fillet of haddock um with a haddock mousseline tortellini um pickled shallots and uh radish and samphire um a scallop roe emulsion uh, uh rosemary flowers um that went on top of the fish um so i'm trying to think now it's been <laughs> and um just some other small little bits of garnishes and um all sourced locally um made a sauce from uh, some wine from Polgoon Vineyard, which is about a mile and a half down the road um, in Haymore. So it was all, all sourced locally. Lots of forage stuff, yeah, wasn't there, which was very good. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, it, I've the the first experience that I have had actually fishing was going out with my dad um, on his boat behind uh, St Michael's Mount. Um, so every I've always seen things that are local local and i've always worked in places and had been in the circles of people who do use um local produce it's important uh, um, but from a business point of view when you when you're eating at a table and you can see the sea from your table it's important that the the food and garnish that you're putting on the plate comes from the sea that you're looking at <laughs> so yeah. you know it's the for me the um the importance of that circle from 
well, they say field to plate, but, you know, sea to plate is quite important, especially being right down, tucked away in the southwest, where it's normally, well, forgotten for quite a few things, but but well, not, we, thankfully, we for sea James, you're, um, you're squawking seagulls entry to your video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't, I can't say that was entirely <laughs> planned. That, that, that um, was but, uh, entertaining, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think we we kind of looked at it and thought, well, that might you know just show off Cornwall a bit more. But but yeah, no, thank you, I, I appreciate it. But yeah, so uh, in answer to your question, uh, all locally, yeah, and um, and yeah. I mean, in all fairness, your tortellini wasn't wildly dissimilar to to Caton's ravioli, which was lovely with the egg right. yolk in it. Yeah. Um, you know, when you split it open and the egg yolk ran, it was like, oh mm. man. <laughs> was, uh, Kate, Katie's dish was, you know, there was there was similarities in the fact that you both yeah. had some really nice pasta yeah. accompaniment with it. Yeah. So. Yeah, lovely. Um, so very good, guys. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Right, um, thank you so much, Graham. You just sum up. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you all. Um, so we'll be in touch. Organise all your prizes and what have you, and. Um, as I say, if somebody wants a one-to-one -one session next week, let us know and we'll, uh, we can set that up. Uh, ben, you just have one thing to add about the winner of this competition. We'll now be entered into... Ah, yes. Um, yes. So we, we heard, just sorry, Ben, we heard um, last week from the um, Young Chef of the Year competition that uh, the winner of this gets automatic entry into the semi-finals. So um, that's something that I've got. To, I've got to liaise with um, with the organisers of that committee about it. But uh, we'll uh, we'll come back to you on that one as well, James. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So. Super wildcard prize. Um, yeah. We'll be yeah. working on. So well done. But listen, well done, chaps. Um, I think you've all got emails. Anybody wants uh, help with the next step in their career in job advice, anything we can do, no one hesitate. Just get in touch with me direct. And there's not much in this cookie world I can't fix, okay? Yeah? <laughs> That's but I'm very sure true. I'm going to some old look to see how well you've all done. Okay? Thank you yeah, all very, yeah. very much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Well done, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. 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 Hi, my name is James Groomer Penny. Uh, I'm 19 years old and I'm currently at Penwith College. And during my time at college, I've been lucky enough to complete the Rick Stein Cooking Academy, uh, the Paul Lanesworth Cooking Academy, and have been fortunate enough to do lots of pop-up events uh, and go and be involved with things like Padstow Food Festival and Port Leven Food Festival. Down in Cornwall, uh, we're surrounded by the sea. So the haddock that has been used in the dishes that I've prepared, cooked and presented for you is using local sustainably caught haddock. As I have grown up in Cornwall and seen the way things have changed over the years and my understanding of seafood and sustainable fishing, that side of it, it's very important to me that I show that in the food that I cook. So the dish that I have cooked for you today has largely been foraged by myself and all of it has come from less than a three mile radius. For example, the wine that I used in my sauce has come from Polgoon Vineyard, which is about a mile away. The three-cornered leek has been foraged from the Penwith College grounds. The rosemary flowers, which are on top of the fish, have also been foraged from the college grounds. Samphire has been foraged by myself with rolled up trousers and shoes and socks off. And the fish, of course, has been caught sustainably and ordered and delivered from one of the fish companies in Newlyn. So the dish for me is a way of expressing my passion about seafood and about ingredients that are widely available in Cornwall. I think that all of the elements on my plate have been shown simply but effectively. I think that's very important. When I was looking at sustainability and doing a bit of research on it, I came across a chef from southern Spain called Angel Leon, who has had the nickname Chef of the Sea. He's been looking into what's called eelgrass and zostera, 
Zostera is the small grain at the bottom of the eelgrass which grows in all types of habitats. Uh, we do get it in this country, uh, it grows in a whole range of sea environments. Remarkable cold play. Right, it is Foodie Friday. I'm very glad to say we have two guests on the line. Uh, we've got 19-year-old James Greenwood Penny from the South West. He's only gone on one competition for the best sustainable seafood. OK, who has given him this? Well, it's the MasterChefs of Great Britain. Let's go to their representative, first of all, and uh, Ben Bartlett. Ben, first of all, can you just explain who the MasterChefs are? Yes, of course. Yeah, the Master Chefs of Great Britain we were formed in 1980, so long before the TV series. Though many of our members, you know, have been on the show, and we're a forum for exchanging culinary ideas and uh, furthering training, especially for young chefs. We just, you know, promote everything that's the best of British. It could be ingredients, recipes, suppliers, and. Uh, just upholding great culinary traditions and skills. And you've been in existence since 1980, promoting an industry which must be going through its most difficult period ever. Yes, very challenging. We've got some members that have been closed for over a year, um, but some of them are reopening and, you know, we've got to do our best to support them all. Yeah, I know, and thankfully there are groups like you there every step of the way. Now, did you get to taste James's food, or was this all online? It, this was the unique challenge of this competition. It was all online. All the entries were virtually submitted, so it gave an extra challenge for these young chefs. But we looked at... The judging was very strict. We looked at the recipe detail, things like sustainability... Um, the financial costings, allergens, how creative they were, the presentation, and how they used the Churchill China to match, you know, the fish dish that they created. Well, I've seen the, the images on BBC Spotlight. It was fantastic to look at. Um, was it fantastic to taste? Well, let's find out. James Greenwood Penny, the winner, is on the other line. First of all, James, well done. Justly deserved. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay, what did you give us? Um, so the dish that I um, cooked for the judges was a steamed fillet of haddock, sustainably caught haddock, um, from one of the fish suppliers uh, in Newland, which is only a couple of miles away from me. Um, scallop tortellini, pickled shallot and samphire, purple sprouting bro broccoli, rosemary flowers and three-cornered leek that was I foraged myself just from um, up the road on the college drive. Um, a split gin seaweed sauce um, using St. I seaweed gin that came from St. Ives Gin Company, again, so only a couple of miles away from me. That sounds brilliant. In fact, you had me enticed right the way up to broccoli. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was beautifully presented. But I've, I've got to ask about your background because you don't mind me saying you are 19, for heaven's sake. Yep. Yeah, only 19. So when, when did you start um, cooking? What, what drew you into what is basically a pretty tough industry? Well, that's a very good question. Um, the first insight and experience I had to cooking and especially to fishing was um, going out in my dad's boat um, behind St Michael's Mount and catching mackerel and then having them for lunch the next day um, which actually was sustainable fishing but I didn't know because it was only I saw it as me and my dad going out very very early in the morning uh, too early um, but that was going out and having fun and learning about the sea and the local area and stuff and that is the first kind of insight into what is now my journey about learning about sustainable fish and sustainable fishing right up and down the UK. 
Well, sustainable fishing, it's got to be. It's been focused on uh, time and time again from Land's End to John O'Groats. We are, we are ruining the sea, but you have made this effort. Is this your, is this your signature dish? Is this something that you really do specialise in, cooking fish? Um, I have always enjoyed cooking fish. I think as I can see the sea from my bedroom window, I think it's, it would be very peculiar not to enjoy cooking fish. Um, I've always worked in local restaurants and pubs and, and things like that. And they have a huge drive and focus point on using products that you can see from your restaurant table win through your restaurant table window. Yeah. Um, so it's always been very important to me. And it's always something that I've felt that needs always publicizing. Um, a lot of the time it gets pushed to the push to the the background and I think it's always important for people to remember that it doesn't matter where you get fish from that always has to come from the sea and if of course if you don't look after the seas and learn about them and educate yourself about them then all of a sudden you'll find out that the fish that you get possibly won't be the best quality it could be and has possibly traveled too many miles to get to you so it's it's always important that you learn and educate yourself about seafood and the sea where the nearest bit of sea to you well let's let's bring uh, ben back in here at the moment some thought has gone into this ben some real thought yes and uh, we were you're blown away with james you know he um picked every box um we did the competition in partnership with the marine conservation society and they were really pleased, you know, he, he made sustainability one of the key features. And, you know, James is a credit to the industry and a, and a chef to watch out for in the future. Well, how do people get into the industry these days? Because I know you've been you've been in there for some time. I mean, you're 19. I've got I've got older pants than that. I mean, for heaven's sake, this is uh, this is uh, this is an industry which is really suffering at the moment. Not just chefing, but uh, front of house, the waiters, commie chefs. They're just not there at the moment, and of course, the conditions pretty antisocial at times. Um. Yeah, they. I'm. I won't lie. Yes, they are. Um, they can be, especially um, as I'm only young. A lot of my friends who have other jobs, you know, they they go out and do things on the weekends and stuff. And so I I manage to as well. Um, I... Oh, we seem to have lost him there, Ben. Can if you can just take up the uh, the conversation there across the UK, is it tough? Um, is there any light at the end of the tunnel at the moment? It is tough, but. You know, we've got some of the best uh, colleges and places to learn how to cook. And for me, you know, I've been a chef for over 40 years and it's the real pleasure and passion you get when you cook, you know, using really good ingredients and you make people happy. That's what really good, you know, cooking is all about. OK, where did you start? What age did you step into the kitchen? Um, a, a bit like James, I left school as soon as I could at 16. I went down to Bournemouth. Um, I studied at the college there. I worked in 40s. Um, you might remember it was on the front. Um, I remember they gave me a chef's jacket. It, I could wrap it around myself twice. Um, <laughs> my, my first pay packet was £1.23 an hour. Um, so I just had a, enough money, you know, to pay for my digs, but I got an extra job and I, I just loved it. And it's, you know, given me the opportunity to travel. I've, you know, worked around the world. I worked in some great um, hotels and restaurants. And yeah, I, I just absolutely love it. it. It's, you know, part of your social life as well. Um, you get to you know, meet great people. It's and we've got a fantastic industry. Um and yeah, I say to anyone, you know, if they're interested, you know, apply to your local college, see what courses there are. There's some part time courses, full time courses. You can go in a direction if you, you know, really like baking or if you like pastry or if you like, you know, butchery, you can specialise as well. Yeah. And uh it's a great industry to be in. Well, you, you've certainly sold it uh, sold it there. James, by the way, what did you win? 
well there, there i had a, an amazing selection of prizes um there was a i had 250 pounds to spend at the church was tableware company who graciously um supplied all the plates and tableware um i had a uh, article in the or will have an article in the master chefs magazine yeah. um, a hook line and sinker cookbook and some very very useful fish preparation tools the scalers bone um, bone tweezers and lots of other lovely little bits i was actually amazed when i picked up uh, uh, proper chefs knives a how sharp they are and also how eye-wateringly expensive they can be <laughs> Yes, well, you can. There's always variations of of the same thing. Um, I have to quickly um, say thank you to Truro and Penwith College. Um, you were saying a minute ago, how do people get into the industry? They've helped me so much, um, bringing me on, teaching me. Uh... Oh, we seem to have lost you again there. Oh, what? you're back. You're back. Oh, Carry on. Carry on. I've been. Well, I've been very fortunate to participate and um, enjoy the Rick Stein Academy um, that has been done through Truro and Penwith College, the Paul Ainsworth Academy, again, done through um, Truro and Penwith College, and many, many pop-up events and food festivals that have all been made uh, happen by the college. And the my chef lecturer, Dave Izzard, is, is really passionate about the industry. Um, and he really wants to bring on the next generation of young, passionate and driven chefs. Brilliant. James Greenwood Penny, I don't think this is the last time we are speaking. Thank you uh, for this. Where, by the way, where are you cooking at the moment? Uh, I'm cooking at a, a gastro pub at the top of Marazine called the Fire Engine Inn. So right. Right, right close to the sea and it's a beautiful location. Brilliant. And uh, we we will be talking to you in the future, I know. And plus the fact, uh, Ben, are you still chefing at the moment? Are you in one place? I've, I've now, well, become an author, really. I've written lots of uh, books. I specialise in barbecue and fish. And this year, I'm really pleased to say I'll be cooking and demonstrating at all the great British food festivals around the country. Oh, right. Are you coming this way by chance? Um, I've got to check. I think we're, yes, like we're coming down to Devon um, at the end of October. Oh, right. Well, we look, I will look forward to catching up with you. And if people want to find out more about the MasterChefs, uh, where do we go? Is there a website? There is, yes. Um, MasterChefsGB.co.uk. And you'll find um, our website and uh, you'll see some of the pictures that, you know, James's fantastic dish. I know, they, are, they were really colourful. They were on uh, Spotlight on uh, our television reports and they looked absolutely remarkable. James, thank you. Uh, ben, thank you. And uh, keep on, both of you, keep on doing what you are doing, OK? Definitely, definitely. Thank, thank you. you. Cornish Chef has been crowned the winner of a National Sustainability Cooking Award by the Master Chefs of Great Britain. The winning dish from James Greenwood Penny from Truro and Penwith College featured haddock, samphire, local seaweed gin and foraged garlic with rosemary flowers. All of his ingredients came from within a three-mile radius of James's house. Oh, it looks delicious. Now time for the weather. Here's David.